Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We're almost 200 people on this um, Zoom link. Thank you very much, kids, for joining. I can see an entire family. Um, oh, wow. Well done. Okay. So, good afternoon, Ma. Hi. HP, please can you put your type your full name so that we know who you are instead of calling you HP? I see your message. Thank you. Okay, so um, the event is ARM's My Passion, My Future. It's a teenage program um, that is our CRS social responsibility as a firm. Um, our long-term objective is to continually support the development of tomorrow's leaders, which is you guys. So we've been doing this since 2018. Um, this is our sixth edition. Um, in the past, um, we've always had physical events. And um, since 2020, the pandemic, we've always had virtual events because we realized that the virtual events gives us an opportunity to have more of you, um, you know, hear our story at ARM and what we do. We're all about investments and um, building a future for um, tomorrow's leaders. And I said, that's you. Okay, so the history of my passion, my future um, is fantastic. Um, what has happened in the past is usually we, um, okay, before I do that, let me just do a poll, a quick poll. Please be honest. Um, tell me if it's your first time of attending or if you've attended before. Um, be as honest as possible. Okay. And then I'll know exactly, I, I can tell you a little bit about what to expect. Okay. The poll is up. Is this your first time at My Passion, My Future? Yes, it is. Or no, I've never been before. I'll just give you a few seconds to answer. Ms. Dom, I see your hand raised. Can you just answer the poll first? And then when it's time for question and answer, and we need you guys to be active and engaged, um, we'll go to the question and answer and unmute you if we have to. Okay. A few more responses in nine seconds. Okay, um, this is my first. Fantastic. First okay, time. so. Okay, so I can see that. 85% of you, this is your first time at, the, at a My Passion, My Future event. Welcome. And no, I've been here before. If you've been here before, go in the chat right now and tell me what year you joined. So that um, we know, we can tell you that you are going to expect something completely different from all our previous editions. Okay, so why are you here? You're here today to learn a lot. Um, Part of what you're going to learn um, is going to be given by my colleagues in financial advisory. Um, you're going to learn a little bit about financial literacy, um, things about saving money and how to start investing today, because it's always good to start early. You're also going to get to hear from um, two, a few speakers that are going to tell you exactly what they're doing today and how their passion was able to translate to their jobs today. Um, they're going to share a few um, nuggets to help you so that if you're having troubles finding out exactly what's the, uh, what you would like to do in the future, or you have a passion, mommy and daddy are not really, you know, interested in that passion, but they want you to become a doctor or a lawyer or, you know, all these other um, professions that you're not really, really, you don't really, really love. Um, Yes, so this is your opportunity. So our speakers in the past, um, in 2020, we had a speaker, her name was Rennie. She was 24 years old. She had, um, her dad was an investor in ARM and she had um, gotten a lot of investment um, ideas from her dad and advice from her dad since she was four years old. And at 23, she was able to save enough money to buy her own home. So please, she was a speaker that was 23 years old and saved enough money from age four to 23 to buy her own home. So this is what I'm honestly wishing for everybody. Last year, I had a co-host. 
His name was Ufo. Ufo had joined two of my passion, my future editions, won prizes on those my passion, um, my passion, my future editions. And out of his prizes, he used it to invest in ARM. So that's he's now a client of ARM. And every month, he always adds money to his investment. So he's basically watching his investment grow and his money grow. So recently I spoke with Ufo and Ufo confirmed to me that he has started working. He's almost 21 years old. Um, he started working um, a summer job and 50% of his income is put towards his savings. And the other 50% is what he spends on things that he needs to spend money on. So you would hear all about needs, wants, and all that information when my colleague comes to come and talk to you about financial success, okay? So to officially welcome my co-hosts, they're also teenagers that have been at future, past my passion, my future events. I would like to introduce my first co-host. Her name is Goodness. Goodness, are you there? Yeah. Fantastic goodness. Um, can you unmute your mic? Say a little bit about yourself. Let us know who you are. Um, also share a fun fact about yourself and tell us what you learned at the My Passion, My Future edition you attended. So I was at the 2020 and a few of us when I feel that it was that of 2020. So Ms. Vinny, a little woman that can speak on the other year, she taught us that we should always have the silence, we should not honor our parents with smiling things like we go to school and we go Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much, goodness. Um, we can't really hear you, but I'm sure we'll sort that out as the program goes along. Okay, so I would like to introduce my next co-host. His name is Vershima. He's the only man in the house in us with us hosts. Um, Vershima, please can you unmute your mic? Give us a big smile. Tell us a little bit about yourself and also a fun fact and what you learned at the last uh, My Passion, My Future event that you attended. Good day, everyone. Um, my name is Vershima Oda. I'm 16 years old. Um, a quick fun fact, fun fact about me is I love to play and watch sports. And at the last, my passion, my future, I attended in continent. I love, I then to invest my money instead of always saving it, which will help to grow the money. Fantastic, Vishima. So what, what do you like to do? What's your fun fact? Oh, my fun fact is I love to play and to watch sports. Oh, my okay. Fun. So you'll be busy next week when the UEFA Champions League starts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So my last co-host is Louisa. Louisa, please, can you unmute your mic? Tell us a little bit about yourself. And um, teenagers, please, all these um, characters, they're not characters from um, es es Esmeralda. So please, this is Louisa's face. This is what she looks like in cartoon form. So Louisa, unmute your mic. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. And the last My Passion, My Future event, what you learned at that event. Hi, everyone. So my name is Louisa. I am 15 years old. I am based in Lagos. One fun fact about me is that I love the color purple. And I was here at last year's event, 2022, My Passion, My Future. And I particularly enjoyed the part about digital health and well-being. So I promise you guys are going to have a lot of fun. So since we're all dropping our fun facts, you guys should also drop yours in the chat using your name. So that's me, yes. Thank you, Louisa. Okay, so Louisa, Goodness, and Vershima have spoken, and they've told you a little bit about what they learned at previous ed editions of My Passion, My Future. In the very first virtual My Passion, My Future, I want to read um, a quote that our group CEO, Ms. Jumake Ogudari, quoted um, at, that, at her opening when she was welcoming everybody to the show. She mentioned something about... Um, from a, an American... Um, 
writer. His name is Frederick Buckner. And she said, your vocation in life is where your greatest joy meets the world's greatest need. So wh whatever it is that you do in life, you have to be there doing it to fill a gap, to fill a void. It's not a copycat um, situation where you know, you're copying your neighbor because your neighbor is a, a doctor, you want to become a doctor. It's whatever you're truly passionate about. Whatever, whatever you decide that you know you want to be your vocation, that is where you find your greatest joy. And that's where you make the money. After you make the money, you will come and invest it with ARM, okay? Okay, so I would like to, similar to school, there are rules and regulations um, at this event. I would like to then hand over to my co-host to explain all the rules um, and regulations during this event. Okay. So our first housekeeping rule of today will be for everyone to please raise your hand when you would like to speak instead of interrupting someone who is currently speaking. Exactly, Vershima. And as said before, please let us know who you are and answer any questions in the chat box. Okay, so if you didn't hear what goodness said, goodness said, all participants are muted, please out of respect, stay muted till the end of the program, or the only time you can speak is when you raise your hand and we unmute your mic um, to ask a question or to contribute to the entire program at any given point in time, okay? Prepare to have lots and lots of fun. There are prizes to be won along the way. Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention, okay? All right, guys. So we are on social media at ARM Engage on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Threads. So please take out your phone and follow us now. So there's so much more to learn and experience from ARM outside of this meeting. So yeah, go and follow us. I think it will be time now for our first game. I 100% agree. So everyone should get out their typing fingers as we're about to have the first game, which, yes, it has a price. So the rules are simple. All you have to do is put in a name, a place, an animal or a thing that starts with a given letter. So like, for example, with the letter J, the name is just a thing, the, anim the place is just, the animal is jaguar, and the thing is jug. And you also have to put it in a sentence. So mm -hmm. like the sentence given in the example. So now for the real game, the letter we're going to be use using is the letter V. So a name, place, animal, or thing that starts with the letter V. Fastest fingers. And of course, your sentence actually has to make sense. Please put all your answers in the chat. Louisa, can I use Vershima's name? Since his hmm. name starts with a V. Hmm, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, very tough. Can I also send your answers at a B and Okay, congratulations, guys. Yes. A few of you are responding via chat. Guys, please, you have to put it in a sentence and put and put it in the general chats. Don't send it to anyone directly, please. Let everyone see your answer. Wow. Wow, I think we have a winner. So, con do we have a winner? Yeah, we have a winner. Congratulations to Paul David Nakwachuku. Congratulations. So, you just won the first game. What was Paul's sentence, um, Louisa, so that um, everybody else would know? His sentence was, my name is Vivian. I live in Vietnam. I love vultures and I own a van. So, he didn't use Vashima's name. So you don't <laughs> use Vashima's name. Fantastic. Okay. All right. So I know that you guys are having fun just playing games, but now um, I think it's time for us to get a little 
to get more information about what we do at ARM. So we're going to play a short video. Please, Louisa, what should they do? Pay attention. Trust me, you guys are going to want to pay attention. Fantastic. So pay attention to the video. Thank you. Everyone dreams of a better tomorrow. A tomorrow fueled by hope for the future. And the memories of unfulfilled aspirations. At ARM, we're all about realizing ambitions. with decades of innovative wealth creation expertise. ARM has everything you need to go from where you are to where you need to be. Join us. Let's face tomorrow together. ARM. Invested in your tomorrow. So I hope you guys were what? Paying attention, paying attention, paying attention. Okay, like Louisa said, we might ask a question about that video, okay? Okay, so officially to welcome us, I would like to introduce one of my senior managers. But before I do that, I would like to recognize our group CEO, Ms. Jumake Ogundare, our deputy CEO, Mr. Sadiq Mohammed. Um, I would also like to welcome Ms. Uche Azubike, as well. She's the MD of ARM Academy. I would like to welcome Mr. Wale Udutola. He's the MD of ARM Pensions. Um, I have the MD of ARM Investments Managers, Ms. Kai Olga. I have um, one of our executive directors in Mixta, who I'm about to introduce. But before I do that, finally, I would like to um, welcome one of our executive directors, Munir Buba, of ARM Investment Managers as well. So, yes, we have. It's a teenage show, but you can ask any questions on investments, any questions about investing, any question about ARM, and we'll be able to answer all your questions. Also questions regarding anything else um, that any of our speakers have, we would have an opportunity for you to ask those questions, okay? And somebody, um, Ruana, Ru Rona, she's reminding everybody to have some type of etiquette online in the chat. Um, let's be polite to each other. Um, remember whatever you post online would last forever, you know, and, um, yeah, that's it. So on that note, I would like to invite the executive director, legal and corporate services of Mixta Africa, which is the property arm of ARM, Mr. Ugo Undubisi, to welcome us officially to the 2023 edition of My Passion, My Future. Good afternoon, Ugo. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Moradeke. Um, please confirm, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Perfect, perfect. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's um, a honor and a privilege to be speaking with you. Um, I'd also like to um, um, extend my greetings to um, the group CEO, um, Jo. I'd also like to extend my greetings to Mr. Sadiq Mohammed. Um, Wale Odutola and um, my other colleagues on the other side. Um, today, it's, um, you know, I always like money. I always like money and um, it's quite an, an interesting um, um, discussion that you people will be having in the course of this, um, um, I call it a show or an event. Um, first of all, I want to um, ask or plead with you that it's up in your own best interest that you take this um quite seriously i mean honestly i think you are really really privileged and um we in our own time um we learned this the hard way we for those that learned it we got some of us got burnt but lo and behold at this age very impressionable ages of years um arm is taught it wise to sit you down and put you through um financial literacy there's something about financial literacy that I must say that um, there's um, a wrong impression about it. So typically in our own time, and I'm sure this also what most young ones must be thinking about now, that why now? Why do I have to learn about it now? I don't have any money. When I have money, when I make money, then 
perhaps I should start learning it. Very, very bad idea. Financial literacy starts from the very, very first day that you, in fact, as you begin to learn how to speak, you should start learning how to be financially literate. And I'll tell you why. Um, your proficiency in financial literacy is going to be what will prepare you to achieve your life goals, be it um, saving up to attend school, saving up to um, start a business, saving up to um, start a family, or even saving up for retirement. Because it's a, a from cradle to grave, final, the importance of financial literacy cannot be over, overemphasized. Now, it's, it's something, it's a core skill that people tend to underestimate. It's a core skill that people need. For everything you want to do in this world, you have to financially plan towards it. And sometimes, um, why it's so nice that ARM has studied wise to get you at this age is that if you get the very principles of financial planning and financial literacy at this age, if you get them ingrained in you, as you go through life, you find out that you start um, applying it even unconsciously in everything you do. You learn the, 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 the stream powers of saving. You learn the stream powers of planning, budgeting and all. Um, at this point, there's a book I know that um, it used to be, I got that book from an uncle of mine. Um, I don't know how many people, uh, if you are, how many of you have been um, privileged to read that book. Do you know that book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Do you know the book? Um, I don't know if um, you could just um, put in a chat box or something. It's a, it's it that book number. It's it's I think it's been it's it's it's, it's well it's one of those old books that any day you pick it, the wisdom in that book never gets old. Um, there's so much wisdom there. It's just what tells you about the life you will see. Um, most of you right now, I think you're still living with your parents. You're still it's. Uh, Pardon? No, Ugo, you can continue. Thank you. You're, 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 you're but still a few living people have the read the book. They put yeah. it in so the it's, it's after this program, I will enjoin you to go back and read that book. And you'll see that the principles that are brought out in that book will speak to you even more. Um, the, 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 the last thing I'd like to leave with you at this point is to reiterate the point that Actually, you are late right now, even trying to learn about financial literacy because yesterday was a better day than today. Mm -hmm. But be that as it may, we are here now. Try and open your minds. Um, you're a privileged bunch. Um, people pay for what uh, Moradeka and her team are about doing for you. Try and take it as much. Improve on yourselves and be much more equipped for your life journeys ahead. Thank you very much, Moradeka. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. That was such a captivating address. Can you do a post chat in the chat right now? Do a post up and smiley face if you're still with us. To put a smiley face or a thumbs up or a clap if you're still with us. Where's your mouth? Thank you so much, guys. It's great to see that we're all enjoying this session. So, you know how I was saying that we should listen. Now it's time to see who was actually listening. Right now we'll have a quiz to see who knows the ARM slogan, which was mentioned in the video we previously watched. So what's his ARM slogan? Another fastest fingers game. It was mentioned in the video. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Hey, Louisa, you have some winners, many winners. Yes. So we're looking for well, the first to win. I think it's Janet Odusanya. Congratulations. Uh, okay, so Janet Odusanya, congratulations. You're the very first winner of our ARM quiz. So congratulations, Janet. Okay, so just to move things along, I would like to officially welcome our very first speaker. She's a fantastic young lady. She's extremely young. Um, her name is Adesola Sanusi. Um, Adesola 
is an epitome of the very first quote that I had read about, you know, using your vocation, you know, and finding joy in it and then making a difference. Adesola believes that there is more to living than making money. So her and Walter, Walter in the group chat earlier on says, I love money, but not too much. So her and Walter have um, something in common. So Adesola believes that there's more to life than making money. After the corona pandemic in 2020, Adesola left a six-figure job. Do you know what six figures is? So put three numbers, put a comma, put another three numbers, and then put a dot, zero, zero. Ethan, I, I can't see your comma. Fantastic. Um, Mike Fadipe, I, I think that's your last name. But yes, so she left a six-figure job at Google in New York to focus on the African tech ecosystem. She thought, where else can I start, you know, apart from my home country? So Nigeria, because she's Nigerian. So she left America to come back to Nigeria. So all you people that are Jackbine, you know, planning to go and not come back, you are going to come back to come and use your vocation here in Nigeria. So Adesola serves as a mentor in Kibo School, an online university offering STEM degrees to African students. She's also a strong advocate for female representation in tech. And her current role as chief of staff at Okra, an open finance platform which helps businesses in Africa, is paving the way to her dream of placing Africa at the forefront of the tech industry. So on that note, um, oh, well, thank you. Hi, Aditola, I can see you. Can you unmute your mic and just share your story? Yes. Um, hi, everyone. It's uh, really a privilege, honor to be with all of you. I'm super excited uh, to just tell you all about my story and um, hopefully uh, tell you how, where your passions can ultimately lead you. Um, so I'm going to just quickly run through my story, um, how I got to where I am, um, and then I will leave some time for questions. So please don't be shy um, as I run through my story. If anything comes to mind, if you have any questions, uh, please just drop it in the chat and I'll make sure at the end that I can get to as many questions as possible. Um, so I will just kind of start from the beginning of my journey. Um, so I was born in Lagos, um, Nigeria of course, um, and my family actually moved to the US when I was five. Um, and so I spent uh, most of my childhood um, and my teenage years and my early adulthood in the US. Um, and very much like many of you as a child, I um, always used to think about, you know, what would I, what do I wanna be when I grow up? Um, and sometimes uh, I was like, oh, I wanna be a doctor, I wanna be a lawyer. And, and that of course was to the delight of my parents. Um, and then other times I would watch a TV show and I'd dream about being a fashion designer or an artist um, or just kind of just anything that um, piqued my interest at the time. Um, but of course, as I grew older, um, the first passion that I discovered for myself was really math and science. And so um, when I was in primary school, um, math and science were my favorite classes. Um, I didn't like to read, <laughs> I didn't like to write. Um, but I loved my math classes. I loved my science classes. Um, and then outside of the classroom, um, I really enjoyed playing computer games. So I imagine um, some of you can resonate with that. Um, I would always be on the internet. Um, and I had all sorts of different gadgets that I loved to play with. And even at the time, I really loved my Nintendo uh, DS. Um, and so um, kind of my love and my passion at that time outside of school was just really playing with on like the computer. Um, and my parents could never really get me to read a book. Uh, I would hide um, and get my Nintendo taken away when I got in trouble. But um, ultimately, those were some of my early passions. Um, and then, of course, as I uh, grew older, uh, these passions continued on to even secondary school, where I continued to love math and science and on my spare time still um, always kept an interest in computers and gadgets. And it was actually during secondary school um, that I first discovered how to um, really tie my interests together and tie my passions together. Um, and so my math and science um, interest, as well as my interest in computers and gadgets and all those sorts of things, uh, led me to try a computer science class. Um, and at that time, I didn't really know what computer science was. I was like, I guess it's the science of computers, or you know, maybe it'll help me uh, make the games that I like, um, or you know, 
uh, yeah, I didn't really know what it was, but I was told at the time that if you liked math and science and you liked computers, that it was the class to try. Um, and so when I was 16, um, I decided to try my uh, first computer science class and I loved it. Um, it was the first time that I felt like I was in a class where it was really easy to see the impact of my work. And so, you know, sometimes when you're in math, when you're in science classes, you're like, oh, how does this, you know, map back to the real world? Um, but that was the first class where, you know, I could type and finish my homework and things could move across the screen and I could make simple games. And even by the end of that class, I was able to make um, Connect Four, one of the games that I really had enjoyed as a child, both uh, the physical Connect Four and then, of course, um, on the computer when I used to play as a child. Um, and so um, that was sort of the first time I saw my passions really translate to something that I could really do long term. Um, but there was one thing, actually, that I didn't love so much about that experience. Um, and it has also kind of driven one of my passions today. Um, so when I was in that class, there was about, I think, 25 of us. There were only three girls. Um, and that was a really, really sad uh, reality at the time um, because it seemed like for some reason girls didn't feel like they could enjoy or like computer science. And I remember um, at that time people were like, oh, that class is only for, for boys, like girls don't take that class. Um, and that made me really sad because I had found something that um, tied a lot of my passions together. But for some reason, you know, I was meant, I was made to feel like I couldn't belong. And so at 17, um, kind of using this feeling and trying to spur it into action, I started Girls Coding with Girls. Um, and I gathered a bunch of my secondary school mates at the time. And we basically started a program to teach uh, primary school girls uh, computer science. And we took them to, through a couple of lessons and just showed them that, you know, if you like math and science, if you like computers, if you're just interested in understanding how the technology that you use every day, how the websites that you play with, um, the apps that you enjoy, how those things are built, like this is something that you should explore. Um, and it ended up being such an amazing experience. And 10 years now um, later, it's a program that still goes on today in my secondary school. Um, so really happy uh, to see a lot more girls believe that they can enjoy and study computer science. Um, so then back to my journey, um, then at 17, uh, with a lot of hard work, um, a bit of luck and some grace, um, I went on to study computer science at Harvard and um, continue to foster kind of my passions and my interest um, in uh, computer science. And it was a difficult journey. Uh, university came with a lot of tough classes, um, but you know, with a lot of hard work, you know, having study groups and just continuing to really lean into my passion, I was sort of able to get through it. And of course, with every phase of life, you're wondering, okay, you know, I've done primary school, I've done secondary school, um, now I have to find a job. Um, and so in university at the time, I was sort of thinking like, okay, you know, how can, what's the next step for me? Um, and so at that time I realized, wow, like computer science can really allow me to do a lot of different things. And so um, I realized at that time I could do creative work and go into the animation and, and designing things. I realized I could you know, go into finance and really just lean into sort of my math interests. I realized with computer science, I could also go into technology and build the apps, the websites that we're all familiar with and love. Um, and so at the time, I decided to uh, kind of further my passion for technology, and I decided to um, get an internship um, and apply for an internship at Google, um, where I got the opportunity to do just a lot of really, really cool things um, with my knowledge of computer science. Um, and so with the internship, I was uh, given the opportunity to then come back after um, I graduated from university. So at 21, I officially started uh, my Google full-time journey as a young adult at the time. Um, and it was such an amazing journey. Um, I had the opportunity to become a product manager and I did a lot of things across a number of different teams. Um, I got to work on Google Docs and Slides, which many of you might be familiar with. Uh, maybe you use it in the classroom, maybe you use it on your own time. I had the opportunity to also work on an advertising platform. Um, and then the most recent thing I did at Google was uh, just looking at ways to use technology to make the internet safer um, and making sure that people um, are just speaking 
and engaging themselves in a respectful way. Um, and so, of course, I think throughout my entire childhood, um, the being Nigerian never really left me. And honestly, my parents would never let me forget it. Um, and from a very young age, I was always um, reminded that no matter what I do, I have to make sure that I give back to Nigeria and not forget my home. And so every couple of years as a child, uh, we would visit Nigeria and I would see my family, my friends, um, and uh, would just always kind of be reminded of my roots. Um, and so then during the pandemic, um, and I think that was a time where a lot of us were stuck at home, um, not sure what the future would hold. Um, I was just in deep reflection. Um, and I just had the opportunity to really just reflect on my journey and just kind of think about where I was and what I wanted my future to be. And, um, you know, I realized that in a lot of ways, I had it all. I, I had made my parents proud. I went to a really good school. I got a good job and, you know, things were great. Um, I was young and making money and happy. Um, but in a lot of ways, um, I felt like something was missing, honestly. And I wasn't feeling fulfilled by everything that I was doing. Um, and I didn't really feel like I was walking in my purpose. I had kind of aligned my journey on my passions of technology, uh, my passion for math, science, all of those things, but I hadn't really figured out a way for all of that to really map back um, to Nigeria and to really impact uh, my home country and where I was from. Um, and so at the age of 24, I um, decided that um, during the pandemic that I was going to move back to Nigeria. Um, I had heard a lot about the growing technology scene. I had been reading on it, um, following it for a while. And um, I decided at that time that I wanted to be part of that movement. I wanted to be part of advancing um, kind of just the tech ecosystem in Nigeria. And so at, uh, I went on LinkedIn. I started to just message founders um, and just look up different profiles of people and see what companies were doing. And um, ultimately, uh, through just a lot of different conversations, a lot of different chats, I landed an opportunity at Okra, um, which is a fintech based in Lagos um, that is helping businesses uh, build financial services and solutions. Um, and so uh, once getting that opportunity, I moved uh, back to Lagos um, and I will not even sugarcoat it. Uh, the transition was tough. Um, it was very tough um, in a lot of ways. Uh, Lagos felt familiar, but it was very unfamiliar as well. Um, you know, I had uh, left kind of the comfort of uh, my friends in the U.S., a good job in the U.S., and um, had to sort of just kind of start again in a lot of different ways. Um, and so it was really tough. And I remember in some of the first couple months when I came back, I was like, oh, darn it, like, did I do this? You know, maybe I should have listened to my uncle and stayed in the US, you know, maybe I am a little crazy. Um, but, you know, two years now, um, at the age of 26, um, I will, I'm happy to say that I feel like I made the right decision for me. And I've actually found a way to um, marry all of my passion. So my early passion for math and science, which evolved into a passion for technology, which then brought me back to just my love and passion for Nigeria and being Nigerian. Um, and so what I'll say to all of you is, you know, discover your passions. It's not too early to have things that you enjoy, to have things that you're passionate about and make sure that you lean into those passions, believe in yourself and you'll be surprised uh, where life will take you. Um, and so, yeah, make sure that you discover your passions, you believe in yourself and you go after your dreams. Um, so that is my journey. Um, I would love to answer any questions that you all have, um, but thank you for the opportunity uh, to share. Fantastic. Thank you so much, um, Adeshola. Thank you for sharing. So um, this is the opportunity for all our teenagers online to ask as many questions as possible. Please let your questions be based on what Adeshola has said in terms of her journey. Um, and Yes, and we'll wait for her to answer. So Adisala, if you don't mind, just take spend a few um, more minutes answering a few questions. And to the ones that we can't get to, um, also stay online to kind of like um, respond via chat as well. So my teenagers, my teenage co-hosts, are you guys ready to ask questions? Or do you want me to ask the question first? 
Yeah, I'm ready to ask a question. Yeah. Thank I'm you, ready. Mrs. Adesola. Um, please, what is your advice to teenagers who have, who their parents have forced career paths on them? Um, no, that's a, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, you know, ultimately parents are just trying to, I think, do what's best for you and to advise you and counsel you. Um, and, you know, they want you to make sure that in the future, you're able to kind of take care of yourself and whatnot, but, um, kind of what I've always done, um, is to just be very clear about your passions, you know, work hard, you know, educate them and help them understand sort of the opportunities that can come from some of your passions, especially if, you know, you don't want to be a doctor, or you don't want to be a lawyer, um, you know, that's okay. Um, but, you know, make sure that you're still working hard and, you know, you're planning well and you're thinking about the financial implications of your decisions early so that you can make the right decisions for yourself. Um, so that would be my advice is just, you know, work hard. And I think ultimately your parents will support you when they see that you're doing well and you're doing something that um, will be impactful. Thank you very much. So we have a question from Adele K. Adele, who wants to know, how did you decide where to start when you got back to Nigeria? Yeah, so um, when, so I think when I made the decision to come, I really wanted to kind of um, get involved in the tech ecosystem and to sort of help um, with the number of different startups and things that were on the horizon in Lagos. And so a lot of that was before I moved where I did a lot of networking, um, I did a lot of research, um, and just to sort of understand what are the different businesses, um, what are the different opportunities, and how can I help and plug in. And so it was a lot of conversations, it was a lot of um, yeah, it was a lot of research, but ultimately I was able to find the opportunity. And then when I got to Lagos, um, of course, I was able to lean um, on the support of family and friends who were still here. Um, and then, of course, my uh, coworkers and colleagues were also helpful in the transition, just um, helping me kind of understand how to get certain things, move about Lagos, and just really settle myself here. Okay, thank you so much, Ma. So we have another question from David who asks, what made you feel like that you had a passion for mass and technology? Like what attracted you to it? Yeah, so um, I think ultimately it was just what I enjoyed, right? Um, you know, when, you, when you're pretty young, um, oftentimes you, you tend to just have a favorite subject or you have a subject that comes a bit easier to you or that you score. The best marks in and so that was just math and science for me I just uh, from a very young age just really enjoyed it uh, I really enjoyed the class I loved learning about it I did well um, and so that's kind of how I discovered early uh, early on that that was a passion that I had because um, I just liked it and I enjoyed it hey thank you so much Adesola okay so um, we have a few hands raised um, we'll just take one more question from the chat um, so Benjamin um, Magbere, apologies, Benjamin, if I um, mispronounced your last name. He wants to know what's your advice for teens that don't have a strong footing in math? Yeah, so if you don't have a strong footing in math, that's okay. Um, I think we all have our different passions and we all have the different subjects that we enjoy. And so um, if your interest and your passions lie in other subjects, you know, there are ways to find opportunities and to find career paths that are better aligned with you. Um, a fun, like a funny example is even though I uh, loved math and science, my sister hated math and science um, and ended up loving um, English classes growing up. And she uh, loved to sort of read and write. And today she's a lawyer. So um, there's a lot of different things that you can do once you discover your passions. Um, so yeah, it's okay if you don't like math, but um, yeah, you can, there's tons of other subjects and lots of things that you can do with whatever you love. Okay, so we will um, ask El Laura Ogo to unmute her mic. Um, I'm going to unmute, oh, Laura, you dropped your hand. So um, Timmy, I would unmute your mic now so that you can ask your question in person. So I wanted to ask how, how did you overcome to how did you overcome the you know like 
how did you overcome being brought down and being discriminated by boys who told you that you can't really do it? Yeah. No, that's a that's a good question. Um, I think ultimately I just leaned into what I enjoyed. And um, I would also give a, a shout out to my parents at the time, you know, when I went home and I was like, oh, you know, it's it's kind of sad, you know, there's not a lot of girls in this class. And it seems, you know, they encouraged me at the time to really um, still like lean into, you know, what I enjoyed. Um, and I just focused on just doing what I liked. And, you know, even uh, part of starting Girls Coding with Girls was to show that, hey, you know, girls can do this and um, it doesn't make you, you know, weird to like computer science. Um, so yeah, I will say definitely my parents helped. Um, and then it was just also just really owning what I liked and what I enjoyed and not being afraid to be different. Fantastic. Okay, Mimi Tong, I'm going to um, unmute your mic now so you can ask your question in person. So I was I was wondering whether um like if there was any hard parts about your journey if apart from people saying that it was like a course for boys that mostly boys do this was there anything that like was really hard or challenging with your passion for technology math and science yeah um no that's a a good question yeah no I think at different points in my journey there was a lot of um, adversity, I would say. So I think early on when I first uh, did my first class in computer science, there was the initial, um, you know, this is not a class that girls take. Um, but then as I got older, that continued to be a challenge, even in university and even in the workforce. Um, technology is not um, an industry or a sector where there is equal representation of um, men and women, boys and girls. And so um, even in university, there was always that feeling of, oh, I'm different, or you know, is this something that I should be doing? And then even as I kind of entered the workforce, um, that was also always something that I, uh, that was challenging, right? Um, so I think those were some of the things that were hard. And I think I've always just leaned into what I love and, try to be an inspiration to others and then try to help, um, yeah, try to help others uh, get and break into tech when they're interested. So um, I do a lot of things around mentorship. And the reason I do that is just to make, to give someone, someone else that they can look up to. Um, Cause I think oftentimes in my journey, it was looking up to others that also inspired me or, you know, listening to my parents and their encouragement that also kept me going. Okay, fantastic. So we'll take two more hands that are raised and then everybody else who has your hand raised and I'm not able to unmute your mic, please type in the chat box. Adesola would be available to respond via chat. Um, so I would unmute Nena next. And then after Nena, um, I have Ethan. Ha Ethan has his hand up um, and his camera is also on as well. So Nena, I'm going to unmute your mic now. So please ask your question. Um, so what's your advice to people who have multiple passions, like who can't really determine what they want to study now, but they have multiple passions in different places? What's your advice to people like that? Yeah, no, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, so I think my advice would just be look for different ways to pursue those different passions. Um, it's not always things don't always, you know, tightly come together in, in a career that maps to every single one of your passions. And there's still things that I'm passionate about or that I really enjoy that, you know, aren't necessarily tied to my career. So I would just encourage you to um, continue to explore those passions, you know, whether in the classroom, whether outside of the classroom, and then see what opportunities come. Sometimes it's, you know, through opportunities that you get or people that you meet that you discover different ways to combine your passions. And so, I would just encourage you not to necessarily think you have to choose one right away, but you know, continue to explore. And then um, your career journey is really long. Um, I think sometimes when um, that's when I was young, I didn't realize like, wow, you could be working for 10, 30, 20, 30, 40 years. Um, and so um, your career can evolve, right? And there's no 
you know, there's always an opportunity to pivot and to change your mind and to try new things. And so um, don't feel like, you know, whatever you choose right now is necessarily what you have to do for the rest of your life. There are opportunities to um, shift and change if you if you want to. And so, yeah, I would say discover your passions, uh, see the ways that you can, uh, that they can lead to different opportunities. And, um, you know, if you discover something different, don't be afraid uh, to change course or change direction. Thank you so much, Adisola. Thank you very much for that question. Um, Oladi Paul also wanted to ask that question and he thanked you, Nena, for that question. So Ethan, your hand is up. Um, I'll unmute you now. Please, everybody else that has their hand up, please type in the chat box your question and Ms. Sadisola would respond. Ethan, over to you. Uh, yeah, um, good afternoon. Sorry, I just wanted to know like, um, like a scope. So like how many universities did you apply to and did you get a scholarship to Harvard? Uh, so let me think. Um, yes, I applied to multiple. So at the time, I want to say I applied to almost 10 universities um, and, and I, Harvard specifically does not do um, like merit based scholarships. So they don't do uh, scholarships just based on your grades. Um, however, they do do scholarships based on financial need. So if your um, family can't afford the cost to, to pay for all four years of um, the education, they're able to offer need-based scholarships. And so I was able to get a need-based scholarship uh, so that attending uh, Harvard wouldn't be a burden on my family. Thank you for answering that question, Adisola. To my co-hosts um, and everybody else, please put your cameras on. We would like to take a picture with Ms. Adisola. Adisola, we need your big smile. <laughs> and everybody else, please put your cameras on. We would like to take a group photo with Adesola. Adesola has promised to stay behind for a few more minutes to answer all the questions in the chat box. So please don't be shy, ask your questions and don't feel bad if um, you know we missed you raising your hand or any of your questions in the chat box. Your question will be answered, okay? So let's put on our cameras, please. I can see some cameras are not on. Please, can you put on your cameras so we can take a pic quick picture? Just a few more minutes. Okay. This one is how you smile. <laughs> Gabriel is not smiling. Oh, Gabriel Bakary, I can see you. So, three, two, one, big smile, Bershima. <laughs> Thank you, Gabriel. Your smile is very wide. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much, Adisala, for have, um, for coming to come and share your story with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hope they can see us like that. Yes, I can see everybody in the Oluwe family house. Yeah, they are probably what did they do? So thank you very much, everyone, for turning on your cameras. Now we'll be having a quiz by you, Lesson. Thank Should you, Rashima. So right now we're having a 
Trivia Quiz Power by ULESSON. So ULESSON is an educational platform that provides libraries, quizzes, homework help, ETC, basically anything that you need your home, your academic help for, ULESSON has got you. So right now, ULESSON is going to have a quiz for us. I love trivia. I think I'm pretty good at this. Please welcome Jenny from you lesson to take us to our quiz today. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm super excited to be here. Thank you so much, ARM, for putting this together. It has been such an informative session thus far. Like Louisa mentioned ULESSON is an online educational application that makes learning super easy for you and helps you excel in your exams. So today we have some lovely gifts to give out. Today you stand a chance of winning a ULESSON quarterly plan and that gives you access to all our lovely video lessons, live lessons, homework help, you know, you can connect with our learning advisors, practice with our mock exams and practice questions and weekly learning reports. So this is a huge bundle and it's something that you want to win. So it's fastest fingers, get ready and make the best boy and girl win. Yay. Thank you so much, Ma. Okay, guys, now it's time for the actual quiz. You heard her, there are going to be prizes here, so it's fastest fingers. So we are going to ask three questions. So there are rules for these questions. Number one, there are multiple choice questions, but when you're answering, you have to put in the full answer. So like, for example, if the answer is A, you can't just put A. You have to put like whatever A says, and your spelling also has to be correct. Okay, so with, so with that said, let's go to the first question. Question one is, who was the first person to step on the moon? Fastest fingers, fastest fingers, put in the chat. Wow, I'm seeing so many different answers. Fastest fingers. Okay, I'm seeing various answers. Okay, now let's go and see the answer. So the answer is Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong was the first person to step on the moon during the Apollo 11 mission on July 20, 1969. So the winner of this will be announced later. Freshman, out the second question, please. Okay, so we'll be having this next question right now. Um, next question is, which planet is known for its beautiful ring system? So the planet which has, is popularly known for its beautiful ring system. So guys, please type in your answers in the chat box as fast as possible. Hershima, I think they already know the answer. <laughs> Just say what it is. <laughs> okay, let's go and see the answer, please. Until the answer is Saturn which is famous for a stunning and prominent ring system. Thank you all for participating. Thank you. Um, Fiyoluwa Ade Akeredolu was the fastest person to answer that question. So Fini, please can you just send a chat to me um, with your email address and your phone number so that we can reach out to you. Also, Ethan, we don't have your last name. So you won the first question um, in the quiz. So please, can you also send your email address and phone number to me in the chat privately? Okay, last question, goodness. So our last question says, which of the following continents is largest by land mass? Our options are, a, Africa, B, Asia, C, North America, D, South America. Wow, those are a lot of answers. Before I even finish the question, I already saw the answers. So the answer to this question is Asia. 
Asia is the largest continent by land area, covering approximately 30% of the Earth's land surface. That's a lot, 30% for just one continent. Wow. Okay, wow, that trivia took me back to school. Okay, fantastic. Well done, everybody. Um, I'm still waiting for the winner of or the fastest finger for this particular question. Um, as soon as I have it, I will announce. But um, now it is time for you to make sure your pen is working. You have a piece of paper. You'll have a smart um, tablet or anything that you need to take notes because I'm about to introduce my colleague, Okechuku Aja, who is one of the financial advisors here at ARM. And he's going to tell you about financial success. So please pay attention. Um, there's a lot of things he's going to say today that me as an adult, I am doing, I'm using that information and I wish somebody told me when I was younger, okay? So please get ready, pay attention, take your notes because it's very, very important. Hi, okay, Chuku, are you there? Okay, Chuku, you're muted. I can't hear you. Hello, Deke, can you hear me? Fantastic, yes, I can. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to this year's edition of My Passion, My Future. I'm so glad to see so many people are logged on for what I consider to be the most important aspect of today's program, which is financial success. Now, I'm going to start with a fun fact about myself. I love football. I watch football. Anytime the Premier League is on, I'm always watching football. And my favorite player is Messi. And I do agree that Messi is better than Ronaldo. Now, a second fun fact about me is I love giving away prizes. So put on your thinking caps, pay attention, because you're going to learn a lot today. And you're going to win amazing prizes. So if you want to win a prize today, once I ask a question, just type your answer in the chat box. <clears throat> Don't wait for me to prompt you. As soon as I ask a question, just go into the chat box and type your answer. Okay? Now, before I start the session, I'm just going to reintroduce myself. My name is Oke Chuku Aja, and I'm a financial advisor with ARM. <clears throat> so, who knows what a financial advisor does? Chat, group, chat box, chat box, who knows what a financial advisor does? Okay, good answer, good answer, good answer, good answer. Good answer, very good answers, very, very good answers. I'm going to be giving a lot of prizes away at this rate. Wow, <laughs> very, very good answers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, <clears throat> we'll announce at the end of the, uh, the program who got the answer right. Okay, so now I can see uh, very many interesting very good, very good, very good. Keep on, very good, very good, very good. Okay, so what a financial advisor does, we talk to people about growing their money. That's all we do. We speak to people every day about growing their money. So who wants to grow their money with ARM? Just like ARM in the chat box. Fantastic. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> so many people want to grow their money. Fantastic, fantastic. Oh, I see. That's good, good, good. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we all agree that financial success is important because without enough money and financial resources, we won't be able to afford the things we want later in life. Because buying a Ferrari, traveling, or traveling around the world, or buying your dream home, that's why we need to pay attention because I'm going to give you four rules to financial success, okay? So just pay attention. I'm going to give you the four rules you need in life to be financially successful. Rule number one, your income should be more than your expenses. Your income should be more than your expenses, okay? 
Now, your income is anything that goes into your pocket or your bank account. Your income is any money that goes into your pocket or your bank account. Okay, so give me an example of your income. That's good. Nice, 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 nice. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, your expenses is money that goes out of your pocket or out of your bank account. Okay, so give me an example of an expense. Nice. Actually, some kids are very smart here. So some of the examples for income that they had mentioned was wages and salaries. Some examples of expenses, fuel expense, somebody said rent, somebody said bills, somebody said um, taxes. Fantastic answers. Really brilliant answers. We've got a lot of smart kids in the house today. I'm not sure I'm going to be afford to give everybody a prize, but I'll try my best. Okay, so that's rule number one. Your income should be more than your expenses. Now for rule number two, you need to limit your borrowings. You need to limit your borrowings. Now, I understand that life happens and sometimes we need to borrow money to pay for a very important need. You know, you might need a laptop for school. I don't have enough income to buy a laptop. So it's okay to borrow. You know, I'm not saying it's a bad thing to borrow. You just need to make sure that you don't borrow in excess. And the rule of thumb is do not allow money that you borrow to be more than 30% of your income. So if your pocket money is, let's say 10,000 Naira every month, you do not want to borrow more than 3,000 Naira during that month. Okay, so if your salary or your income is 2,000 Naira, how much can you borrow during that month? Or how much shouldn't how much shouldn't you go over? Two hundred, two thousand, six hundred, two hundred, one thousand, two thousand five hundred, <laughs> six hundred thousand. <000. laughs> okay, some interesting answers there. Yeah? Okay. We'll give you a prize. The person who got it right will get a prize at the end. Okay, so that's rule number two. You need to limit your borrowings. And the rule of thumb is it should not be more than 30% of your income. Okay, now rule number three, you need to set aside funds for emergencies. You need to set aside some funds for emergencies. So a rule of thumb is you need to set aside about three to six months of your income. So you need to set about three to six months of your pocket money, or like someone said, your salary. You need to set aside three to six months of it. So someone give me an example of their salary and how much they're gonna set aside. Three thousand, <laughs> 200,000, wow, you set. <laughs> 5,000, 20,000, 600,000. Wow, some of you earn more than I do. $3 million. You're probably the richest man in Nigeria. Fantastic, brilliant answers. We've got a lot, a lot of winners in the house so far and we're gonna give you out more prizes. Okay, so that's... Um, Rule number three, you need to set aside some funds for emergencies. Now, rule number four, you need to have a savings plan to meet your short and long-term goals. You need to have a savings plan to meet your short and long-term goals. Now, a short-term goal could be you buying a smartphone before the end of the year or before you go back to school after a summer break, you want to buy a, a smartphone. So that's a short-term goal. And a long-term goal could be, let's say you're going to university in about three years and you want to buy a laptop. You want to start saving, you know, you want to start saving for that goal. That's your long-term goal. So the difference between your short-term goal and, and your long-term goal is the duration. If it's something less than a year, it's a short-term goal. 
If it's something more than a year, then it's a long-term goal. So that's rule number four. Now, I'm going to give away my biggest prize yet. I want somebody or anybody to list the four rules for, for financial success. This is going to be my biggest prize yet. Four rules for financial success. Come on, come on, come on. Four we have some hands raised, so I think um, we'll just okay. unmute them, Mike. Okay, please unmute them. Okay, so the first hand hand that is raised here is Tehila Ofo. Um, um, the four rules were... Hi, Tehila, good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma. Income should be more than your expenses. You need to limit your borrows, no more than 30% of your, of your income. Set aside funds for emergencies. I have saving plans to meet your short or long-term goals. Fantastic, that's absolutely correct. Can we clap for her? Fantastic, fantastic, that was brilliant. You are gonna go home with a prize today. Does any other person want to try? Income should be more than expenses. Limit need to limit your borrowing. Your borrowing should not be more than 30% of your income. Set aside funds from for emergency. Keep uh, need to have saving plans to achieve short and long-term goals. Fantastic, fantastic. That's correct as well. You're going to go home with a prize today. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, now that we know the four rules to financial success, what do we do next? What do we do next? Any ideas? Type in the chat box. Any idea? What do we do next? Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we need to change our financial habits. If your income is less or equals to your expenses, in other words, if you spend your entire pocket money without any savings, you need to change that. You need to change that. That's the very first thing we need to do. Now, the second thing we need to do is we need to be disciplined with our money. We need to be disciplined with our money. And one way we can start is by using a simple tool. Now, I'm going to play a game now. I'm going to give you my second biggest prize now, if you can get the answer. So we're going to play a, a game right now. I want you to look at this screen. I'm going to give you a hint. So look at the screen and tell me what's the simple tool that can help you become disciplined with your finances. There's a hint on the screen. Okay, Chuku, they already got the answer right. So I oh think my. Be you guys are way more advanced than I am. I didn't know this till I got to my university and you guys already know the answer. Wow, so many answers right. That's incredible. That's really good, really good. So a budget is a plan to help you manage your money. It's an estimation of your income and your expenses for a period, let's say a week, a month, or a year. Having a budget can help you avoid overspending or spending on things you do not need, which in turn helps you save money. Do we all agree? Having a budget can help you save, avoid overspending or spending on things you don't want, which in turn helps you save money. Do we agree with that? Okay, who does not agree with that? Okay, everybody agrees. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Now, there are so many ways you can create a budget. There are so many ways, but I'm going to talk to you about, in my view, the most interesting type of budget you can use, right? And it's called the 50, 30, 
20 budgets. 50, 30, 20 budgets. You need to pay attention because I'm going to ask questions. The 50, 30, 20 budgets. Now, how does the 50, 30, 20 budget work? When you get an income of, when you get your income, you'd first take aside 50% of your income. You take it aside and you spend it on your needs. You know, things that you cannot do without. So like food, we, you know, you must eat. So when you get your income, the first thing you need to do is you allocate 50% of your income towards your needs, something like buying food, basically. Then the next thing you do, you allocate 30% of your income towards your wants. So what's a want? A want is something that's in not so important, you can live without. Um, for example, going to the cinema. I know everybody wants to see the latest Marvel movie, I hear Spider-Man's coming out soon. Everybody wants, wants to see it, but it's not, I mean, if you don't see the movie, life will go on. So that's what we mean by a want. So remember, 50% goes towards your needs, 30% goes towards your wants, and then the balance, which is 20%, you put that money aside and you allocate it towards building for your financial success. So you put that money aside, that 20% into the four rules of financial success. So you put some money aside for your emergencies and you put some money aside from your goal, for your goals, um, both short and long term. So 20% of your income should go towards your savings. And those savings, you use that those savings for your emergency funds, for your short-term goals and for your long-term goals. Okay, now I said I was gonna give a gift. I'm gonna give a prize, my second biggest prize, I'm gonna give it now. So what I want you to do is I want you to, in the chat box, I want you to draw up a budget, your budget using the 50, 30, 20 rule. You must show me your income, how much, you expect, you must show me your expenses, and you must do it using the 50, 30, 20 rule. My second biggest prize. So just type it, put it all in the chat box. Let's see who's gonna win my prize, come on. You must put your income, you must put your expense, and you must put your savings using the 50, 20, 50, 30, 20 rule. Um, seeing some nice, wow, nice, nice, nice. Wow, that is really interesting. I think we have a winner, but come on, put, put, come on. I'm still gonna wait, you have about three minutes. Put something in the chat box. Wow, that's nice, nice, nice. Okay, okay, Chukwu, I like Emerald's answer. He says um, the 50, 30, 20 rule, 50% goes to income, 30% needs, wants, food, biscuits, cinema tickets, data, games, and then 20% savings. So thumbs up, Emerald, well done. Well done, Emerald. Your answer was absolutely correct. And thank you, thank you. Let's put our hands together. Can do as well, sent a good response. Well done, Chinuri. So clearly, I think a lot of people are learning a lot of things. Please, if you don't understand at any given point in time, type in the chat box so that Okechuku can respond as well. Okay. And if you understand, please put a thumbs up in the chat and just put a thumbs up emoticon so we know that you can, you're can you following and you're getting everything Okechuku is saying. Thank you, Ebun. Thank you, Nimiton. Thank you, someone's hand raised. Thank you, okay, awesome. Everybody's paying attention, well done. Okay, Okechuku. 
Okay, Moro Fats Oshine has his or her hand up. So I'm going to unmute you quickly. Morufat. Mm -hmm. Morufat, you're not speaking. Actually, not done. Okay, so we'll move to Adama quickly. Um. Oh. Adama, can you hear me? Yeah. Fantastic. What's your question? Or what don't you understand? If you want to spend only on your needs and not your wants, is it okay if you just do the 50, 20% and leave the 30 out? Yeah, um, yes, Adana, that's okay. Like I mentioned earlier, there are different um, um, types of budgets. So no, what, you, what you refer to, I'll class that as, I didn't mention it um, in, in what I talked about, but what you talked about, I'll class that as pay yourself first budget, where what all you simply do is pay yourself a salary and the rest of it, you put it towards savings. So it's okay to do that. Um, that's that's a different type of budget method. So it's okay to do that. I think what I'll do is um, I'll put some other methods of budgeting in the chat box. There are so many different types. I just love the 50, 30, 21 because it sort of addresses everything and it's quite easy to follow. But yes, you are right. Um, you can put, just take out your needs and leave the rest towards your savings. Um, that would be what we call a pay yourself first budget method. Good question. Good question. Okay, Sarah, are you ready to ask your question quickly? Um, can inflation affect the um? A budget. Sorry, can you repeat that? We couldn't hear it. Oh, I think I lost Sarah. Dick, I believe some people are asking some, want to ask some questions. They've typed in the group chat. They want to ask questions. Yes, you can respond to those questions. We also have um, several of our ARM staff as well that would respond to all the questions in the chat. Um, Amina, I'm going to unmute your mic. Can you, hello? Amina, I'm going to unmute your mic so you can ask your question. Can inflation rate affect the person's budget? Okay. So the question is, can inflation rates affect a person's budget? Okay, Chukum. Um, not really. Uh, it can affect what you can buy, but what's your, if your income doesn't change, if you're using the 50, 30, 20 budget method, if your income doesn't change, um, you then still need to spend that same income. I mean, it will get you less of what you want, but it doesn't really change how you distribute the money how you allocate um, your funds, your income towards different expenses. You might get less of what you want, but it doesn't really change it. But also remember, there are different budget methods. This is just one I'd like. Okay, um, Ethan, you've asked a question before, so please allow um, Timmy and Amina. To, Timmy, I can see your finger up. So I'm going to unmute your mic <laughs> so you can speak. The emergency funds is more important than the needs. Who, which one would you pick, the emergency or the needs? That's that's an interesting question. Um, really interesting question. But in emergency, you need to put money aside for your emergency first, because that that's that's the need that. 
you are going to might need at some point in the future. I mean, we can't see the future and we don't know what's going to happen. So it's always good to have your emergency fund set aside first before you start putting money towards other things. I mean, they, they work concurrently. So when you're putting up money aside for your needs, you're also putting money aside for your emergency funds. And then when you save up up to, you know, the rule of thumb is you need to save about three to six months of your income. So when you've saved about three to six months of your income, then you stop putting money aside towards your emergency needs. That's a really, really interesting question. So I would say um, initially you, you put your money towards your emergency funds. At the same time, you're putting money towards your needs because you, we can't survive if we don't put money towards our needs. Our needs are things like we need to we need to eat food. We need to when you get when you become an adult, you need to pay for your rent. Okay, Chuko, you were muted for a while. Okay, so also to add to what okay, Chuko has said, remember that an emergency fund, um, emergency really means something that happens once in a while not every day. A need is something that you absolutely need. Every single day you need to pay rent, you know, but an emergency is just an occurrence that you didn't, you know, came unexpectedly. So um, just have that in mind when you're putting money aside for it, okay? And, you know, when that emergency comes, then like okay, Chuku said, you can prioritize um, before your needs, if depending on your situation. Okay, so we'll take one more question and then we have to move along. We don't want to keep everybody here for too long. Um, and we do have other speakers um, that we would also like to share more information on, but please, any question that we aren't able to get through um, to, please put it in the chat. Okay, Chuku and other wealth advisors, um, financial advisors here at ARM would respond to them, okay? All right, so the last, um, person I'm going to have um, speak is Adani. Adani, I'm going to ask you to unmute your mic now so you can ask your question quickly. Okay. Um, what, um, if, yeah. what if what if your, you don't make enough to even have like 50, 30, 20 percent, like your 50 percent to in general? Sorry, there was a bit of an echo there. I didn't get that. Okay, Chuku, you're muted. Um, so you need to unmute to answer the question. Sorry, could you repeat the question? There was echo in the background. Okay, Ad Adani. What if you have a very low income? So like your 50% is just like 100 naira. Okay, so uh, what I'll say is you need to take care of your needs because you can't do without your needs. So if you don't have enough money um, to go around, you need to take care of your needs. Then when we start to make a lot of money or make more money, then you start putting money aside towards your wants and your savings. But you always need to take care of your needs because we can't survive without our needs. Okay, so on that note, thank you very much, um, Okechuku, for um, responding to the questions. Please, apologies. Um, we can't get through to everybody's question, but please type it in the chat and we will absolutely respond. Um, at the end of this um, program as well, we would have Okechuku's email address and wealthadvisor at arm.com.ng as an email address to um, ask any question that you have. Also, don't forget the social media handles please send direct messages um, to any of those platforms um, on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, any of those platforms to ans ask all the questions that you have. And one of our wealth advisors would answer your questions. Thank you. So as a re recap, um, Louisa, would you like to ask your colleagues, your fellow teenagers, what um, they're taking home today? Hmm. So, hmm, goodness, Rashima, what did you take home today? Or should I say what I learned first? 
Before you just a financial um, success session. Oh, okay. So for me personally, I enjoy the part about budgeting, about the 50, 30, 20 budgets. Definitely something I'm going to apply when I start earning. So goodness, Varshima, what did you guys learn? Um, I learned to um, always set aside bonds for emergencies in case I might need it some other time. Um, That's so cool. Goodness, what about you? I learned emergencies can always occur unexpectedly, so we should always try and keep a moderate amount of money aside to take care of those emergencies, and that can be really helpful to me in future. Fantastic. Okay, Chuku, over to you. What are the take-homes that everybody must have if they didn't write any notes at all and they want to start writing notes? What are the take-homes? Before I do that, I must say our hosts are, are so brilliant and intelligent. They, they really aced it. Okay, so the take-homes from this are, number one, you need to create a personal budget. Um, I talked about the 50, 30, 20 budget. That's my favorite, but you can... You know, go online, search for different types of budgeting methods. But I, I would recommend you start with the 50, 30, 20, because it's the most basic of all of them. Number two, you need to allocate funds towards your savings and investments. And one way you can do that is by opening up a mutual fund account with ARM for your short and your long term goals and also for your emergency funds. Remember, you all said you wanted to grow your money with ARM. So you have the opportunity to do that. I'm going to leave my contact details um, after this. So if you want to start today, just get in contact with me. How we can do that. And last but not the least, you need to start early. You need to start. You don't need to wait till you're in your um, you are working and making a whole lot of income. If you start the habit now, when you start working, it's already part of you. So it's not going to be difficult for you to put money aside. But if you don't start now and you start making income, it might be difficult for you to start the habit of saving. So start today. Start today. As a living short, who's going to start today? Just type yes. I'm going to start it today. Fantastic. Okay, Fantastic. while we get responses from that question, anybody that has any questions, please put it in the chat box. Okay, Chuku would respond um, and any of our wealth advisors. So right now we'll move to a quick puzzle. Those are okay, Chuku's details. Please take a picture with your smartphone or any camera that you may have on any device so that you can contact him. Okay, Chuku, please also leave it in the chat box what your details are to everybody. Okay. So I look forward to seeing all next year for 2024, my passion, my future. And I want to know how much you saved in the year. So I look forward to seeing all of you next year. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you so much, sir, for teaching us about this. I've learned so much personally. I know that we're all going to become richer in the future. So right now we have a trivia, which is in form of a puzzle. Okay, so in this trivia, all you have to do is pick out five words which are related to financial literacy. Yes, the fastest fingers game. Mm -hmm. So the five words, you also have to put it in one message. Don't just put like, for example, if the word is, I don't know, to if they are the words are shoe, book, or something, you have to put them all in one message. Don't put it separately. And yes, it's a game of fastest fingers. There are five words, guys. You need to put all of them correctly to win. Fastest fingers. The words have to be in the puzzle that is on the screen. Not just what is whatever you can think of. Okay, another few seconds before we really reveal the answer. Nobody has gotten it right so. All mm, five. Nobody so far. Do you want a, a hint? 
No, they don't need it. I think some people are actually getting it. Okay. I think some people are getting it. Too. So have we found our winner? Yes or no? We have Fantastic. I think we found our winner. Yeah, I think okay, we have. So we'll, we'll, it's time to reveal the answer for everybody. So the five words that we were looking for are invest, money, bonds, business, and Naira. So congratulations to our winner. Our winner will be announced when um, towards the end of the program. So stay on, please. Thank you. Sorry, the chat and everything, everybody's moving so fast that it takes us a little while to get the names across. Okay, so on that note, um, I would just like to ask how many of you have a piggy bank or a savings somewhere that, you know, you have a bank account, that you have a savings account somewhere? Remember you said you're going to, you, yes, fantastic. I can hear, some people are speaking French. Moi, oh, well done. Okay, Ebon, I see you. Saidat, Bausat, well done. Isabel, fantastic. So what you're going to do after this program is you're going to tell your parents that you need to open an investment and that your preference, since you're attending My Passion, My Future from ARM, is to open that investment with ARM. Guys, it's better to start early. You only need 1,000 Naira to invest. 1,000 Naira. Instead of buying, I don't know, even Chocomilo, a pack of Chocomilo is not 1,000 Naira. Yes, but you only need 1,000 Naira. See, goodness is smiling. She likes Chocomilo. So you only need 1,000 Naira to start your investment with ARM, okay? Fantastic. So right now, we would like to introduce um, a little bit of health and wellness. You know, no matter how much money you have in this world, um, you need to be healthy. You also need to ensure that um, you are sound mind so that when it's time for you to enjoy all the money that you set aside, you are healthy, you know, you're not spending it on emergencies that come because of, you know, um, one thing or the other. And you also have to have perfect frame of mind. So to talk about psychology and all the good things, we would like to introduce our next speaker. Her name is Moriah Ojikutu. So Moriah Ojikutu is um, somebody that has firsthand experience with dyslexia and speech impediment, which led her to having a change, to change schools frequently. Despite these challenges, Morayo excelled academically. However, she was soon to realize that academic success alone wasn't enough for well-rounded adulthood. The realization sparked a mission in her to address this issue, leading to the creation of FLOW. FLOW developed a comprehensive curriculum that integrates positive psychology and behavioral economics. The aim is to empower children to understand their values, set goals, nurture a growth mindset, ensuring that they are equipped for a successful future. Since its inception, Flow has been fully operational and has made a significant impact on the educational world, particularly focusing on children between the ages of seven and 18. Through Moriah's vision and dedication, Flow is making a profound difference in empowering young individuals to unlock their full potential any developmental challenges that they may face, it is paving the way for a brighter future where children and teenagers can thrive to achieve their dream. Mariah, this is a lot of words. Please unmute your mic <laughs> and just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do at Flow. <laughs> thank you. I didn't expect you to read all that, but thank you so much. Um, I'm so glad to be here today and I've learned a lot already through everything that has been said. It's been, I wish I had this when I was your age. It's been amazing. Um, so I'm Morayo. I would give a little background again and just what it is that we do and who we are. So before I start with that, what Flo does, I think it's very, it's good to understand my background. And there are two things that I want you to take from this that would lead us to where we're going to. So I was from about 12 years old to 16 years old. I struggled a bit in school. So I used to like change classes, 
literally I used to change schools every year because I couldn't read I couldn't write and she just was up be like oh we don't think school is for her we don't think she can achieve in our school so I ended up changing schools every time when I got to 16 years old I found a school that I thought that was right for me. And then, then I said to read, I said to write, I said to speak well, and things started to get better for me. Um, how, however, with all of these things, I did exceptionally well in school. I got to first class. It was amazing. Um, I, I, um, sorry, I did so well, but when I, um, I'm trying to explain it well so you understand. So I did so well in school, but when I finished, I realized that what I studied and what I was doing wasn't what I wanted to do in life. And that is where the issue started from. So I had studied fine, fine eminence in school. I did everything. I got into in, in investment banking. I realized that I didn't like what I was studying. I was doing at all. I would speak to people around me and they, they would just say the same thing. You have a good job, stay. Why do you want to move? What is your problem? But for me, all the stress that I went to, I couldn't just come into that and just to live a mediocre life. So I started to research on what SOC and SES is about, what makes you happy and everything in that no emission. And that's where positive side and called psychology, and that's where I found this from. So there are two things that positive psychology helped me with. First of all, it helped me during my school time to persevere. And if, even if I had all these things wrong, I was still able to come up with amazing grades. It also helped me to identify that this is not what I want to do. I can always find and achieve what it is that I want to do. So to MD, I want to just speak about that to make sure that we all know this. So first of all, we don't have to go through what I went through. And you can just have a whole, a full per perspective on life. So as you're thinking about things, you're thinking in the right direction as well. So what is positive psychology? I know I've been saying it a lot. And it was like, what is this thing that you're speaking about? So the best way that I know how to explain it, you know how your human body, you need like your vitamins, you need food, you need water, you need all of these things that if you fall ill, your antibodies are strong enough to fight against it. And you guys have done that in science class about your antibodies and how they fight, right? So this is a bit of science coming back. It's the same way your mind needs positivity. And that is having the right mindsets, resilience, building skills, growth mindset. So these are the things that you feed your mind with. So you have a positive mindset and you can go through life making the right decision, understanding your values, understanding your goals, on, the, on, on, on the, having the right mindset to empower you to become the best version of yourself. So I'm going to go through three main things that I think that if you can get this right, you've succeeded already because it is the starting point. And it's very, very important that to know that these three things are different for each pair I'm saying. So you cannot go and copy what your friend is doing or because your friend is getting A and they say that they study all through the night. You now say you want to study all through the night and you get to class and you cannot even read, you cannot even think. What works for one person may not work for you. So it's very important to find yourself, to know who you are and to know what exactly works for you. And by, and by studying and by understanding, you can find that. So the three things we're talking about today is positive uh, affirmation, building resilience, and having the right mindset. Pos 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 positive affirmation is very big at the moment. So I know that everybody knows what that is, right? Do a thumbs up if you know what positive affirmation is. Mm -hmm. No, so I'm guessing yes, thumbs up. Yes, so pos positive affirmation is just when you're saying things to yourself that 
are positive for you. So I am smart, I am awesome, I am grateful, I am loved, I'm good at maths, I am grateful. So when you say these things to yourself, you begin to actualize it. So just to make sure that everybody's for, for following me, can we please put a positive affirmation in the caption, please? Just put a positive affirmation. So I'm, I want to see things like I'm grateful, I'm special, I can do all things, I'm smart, I am loved, I'm brilliant. I like that, I like that. I'm grateful, I'm unique, I'm enough. I never fail, I like that. I'm intelligent, somebody with the intelligent in capital letters, I like that. So yeah, so um, by doing this, you're really, you're really act actualizing it. And once, the first thing that you can do for yourself is be and leave it. And when you speak it out, it really, really helps in, in believing what it is. So next we're going to go to building resilience. So how I try to explain resilience is like your super power. When um, challenges come your way, is having that strength to fight against it and come out on the other side having won. And this is something that I had to use all my life. I even use it now because I stammer, like I said, even speaking on this call alone is like most most people that someone say oh I don't want to do public speaking I would stammer I would stutter but you have to go out of your comfort zone to make sure that you can actually stretch yourself and that is the best thing you can do for yourself because you 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 only feel when you stop so that is why I like that I can never feel because you actually can never feel the only time you feel is when you stop so building the resilience and never giving up is one of the best thing that you can do for yourselves. So on the next slide, we would see um, we see Thomas A. M. Dyson. Does any I I know it's on the board, but does anybody know what he did? Does anybody know his story? No. Maybe. Um, yes, so yeah, he's on the one, screen. <laughs> yes, on the screen, to be honest. <laughs> he's the one that he created the light bulb and he tried 9,099 9, times. Can you imagine? And I'm sure if you look around you, everybody look around you, you see a light bulb. The only reason why we can have this call, write on our books and do all these things is because of him, because he created the light bulb but he tried 9,999 times. Imagine if he stopped at the 100th time. We might not have lights now. And a lot of other things in the world will not exist because he gave up. So it's very important not to give up because what you are supposed to do is also going to unlock other people's things as well. So you have to take your place. So we all too can take our place. So he had to take his place to make the light bulb. So literally everything else can be done. Electricity, everything can be done from him. And he did not give up. And I really applaud him for not giving up. And I honestly, I thank him. And he did this over years ago. And up until now, we're still speaking about him. My children will know him. My children's children will know him. He's, he's somebody that for the rest of time, we will say his name. So you you um, can be one of those people that have that you know that you have been built to create something that 100 years from now, 300 years from now, we will be speaking about it. And you try you and then you try for only two um, years and you give up for some for something that we're going to speak about for a hundred thousand years. So you really have to make sure that you try your best not to give up and keep trying. You only feel when you stop. So on the next slide, there's a picture that I want to show. See, um, there are two people digging for gold and see this guy that stopped. He's so close to it. He's going to go home saying that he never had the strength to dig for gold. The gold wasn't for him. I even say God does not love him and all this kind of thing. But he was that close 
to getting the gold. And, and the thing about giving up is that all the efforts, all the strength that you put into that will be wasted. So you've wasted your time, you've wasted your efforts, and you've gotten nothing in return as well. So there's actually no need for that. That is why you shouldn't give up. This other guy that is here, he might not be smarter than this other guy. He might not be best better, but he's not going to give up and he's going to find the gold. And this one will now have, he'll be jealous, he'll be envious that, oh, I had that plan, no, oh, I had that idea, oh, if only, but it didn't work for me. But it was him because he stopped. So it's very important to keep on going. It do, do until you can do no more, literally. So I really want to emphasize that, that you never really know how close you are. Like you don't know. So keep on trying. Try other ways. Ask for help. Ask people around you who they have done it. Oh, how did you do it? What is the best way to go about it? But you only feel when you stop. I know that I'm saying it over and over and over, but I think that is very important that I do. And the last but not the least is your mindset. So there are two types of mindset. You can have a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. And I'll explain what each of them is really, really quickly. So a fixed mindset child is someone that will not try to do something if they feel like they wouldn't get it right. So you wouldn't answer any question on this call if you're not sure if you get it right. You are not, um, if you don't think you'll be the best, you, you, you wouldn't do it. And you just stick to your comfort zone. But the issue is that in order for you to, so you are not, you, you are not doing anything special, anything new until you're going out of your comfort zone and it's harder. That is when that you know that you're doing something. So a child, in person, not, it's not even about kids, a person with a fixed mindset is fixed. So you're limiting yourself to only what you do. So imagine waking up and doing the same thing every day and not trying to better yourself. That means you, next, next, the next day, just sleep throughout the whole day because you haven't really done anything that is diff different. But a person with a growth mindset is ready to go out of their comfort zone, try new things, see how it goes. Sometimes they feel they get back up, but by that they are developing themselves every day. And it's a mindset. And you can really, you can really decide and pick the kind of mindset that you have. And these three things, speaking to myself in the right way, building resilience and having a growth mindset, I would say are the three things that have gotten me to where I am today. And this is just the beginning. I want to get to a point where your children's children will still speak about me. Because I know that what I'm meant to do on this earth is more than just the next hundred years. And I know that a lot of us have that in us as well. You have to believe it, put, put, put in the resilience and have the right mindset. So those are the three things that I really want us to look at and to think about and just be conscious about it the, the 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 more you think about it the more you're conscious about it in your day-to-day -day, the more you start to manifest and live with those things so I want to ask a question what type of mindset do you think you have just put it in the chat box any growth fixed fixed mindset, growth mindset. Nice. So people that said you have a fixed mindset have, you can, I think we, we, when you get home, research on fixed and growth mindsets. And honestly speaking, it's just for you to go back to the stats, believe that you have a growth mindset and start to manifest it and start to work and think about it deeply in the way you do things. And people, people that have a growth mindset, just make sure that you continue to live and abide by that and continue to make your mindset stronger as well. Yeah, so that's the end for me today. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much, Mariah. Okay, so Mariah would like um, to receive questions now. Um, please raise your hand. Um, we'll take about three questions. Every other question, please type in the chat. 
she'll be able to respond. We don't want to keep you guys for too long and we still have to announce the winners of all the different categories and segments. So please raise your mind. Yes, Clement, we can see you have a fixed mindset. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> I see you. Okay, so we'll start with Tammy. Tammy, I'm going to unmute your mic now so you can ask your question. When you had dyslexia, like when you went to university and you could and you were not happy with what you chose, did you have to go back and start afresh? So I still I still have this um, lexia now. It's something that I've just I live with and is fine. Oh, you're muted. Sorry. I don't know why. Sorry. Okay. I still have the um, dyslexia now. It's something that I just live with. Whatever disability that you have, you can actually maintain and manage it and work with it. And you would be surprised, but most people go to school and don't like, they never they never work in the pro profession that they studied in school. So I went through school. So I didn't actually know that I did not want to do finance until I was done with school. I started working in finance before I knew that that's not what I wanted to do. I had done my pro and professional exams and everything. And now we're going back to, you can genuinely do whatever you want to do. Even after I had done finance for how many years, I started now working with kids to help them un understand their values, their goals, and their mindsets. So if you know what you want to do now, great. But that could also change as well. Don't be too fixated or forced on it. What you study in school for four years does not define who you're going to be for the rest of your life. Fantastic. Thank you, Mariah. Okay, Elizabeth, I'm going to unmute your mic now. Elizabeth, are you still there? Okay. Elizabeth, okay, you've muted yourself again. Okay, Queen, I'm going to unmute your mic. Now I want to ask you, now if you have a fixed mindset, can you change the old mindset even after I've grown up? Um, it's your question that if you have a fixed mindset, can you change your growth mindset even after you've grown up? Of yes. course you, you, you can. Um, everything I've said today is that you can do anything as long as you put your mind to it. You are actually, you, you can do anything, anything in this world. Of course, you can change your mindset. In fact, the fact that you know that there's a fixed mindset and there's a growth mindset, you can start telling yourself that I want to have a fixed mind. I want to have a growth mind mindset. So if you're, let's say, um, you're in class now and they, 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 there's a question that, you're not sure of the answer. You're not sure if it's right or wrong. And be before, you wouldn't raise up your hand to ask the question. You won't raise up your hands to answer the question. Now you can say anytime there's a question that I'm, I'm sure, but I'm not sure, I will raise up my hand. That is working towards a growth mindset. And the more you do things like that, little by little, before you know it, you have a growth mindset. Anybody, even a 90-year-old person can start to develop a growth mindset. It's never too late. It's never too late to do that. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so we'll take Akinola. Akinola, I'm going to unmute your mic now. Um, so please ask your question so that Morayo can respond. And then any other question everybody else has, please put it in um, the chat box um, and Morayo would respond. Please stay a few more minutes um, to respond to as many questions as you can. Thank you. Juaria Akinola. 
My question is, how do I know my mindset and how can I train and work with it? How do you know your mindset and how can you train and work with it? So there is a test to know the kind of mindset that you have, but on your own, you can just be self-aware. So I, I want you to Google what a fixed mindset is what a growth mindset is and write down five attributes of a fixed mindset, five attributes of a growth mindset and see where you fall in, into. So by yourself, without even doing like a proper test, you can decide, oh, I have a growth mindset or I have a fixed mindset. And that is you being true to yourself. Then once you're true to yourself, you can now look at the attributes of a growth mindset and say that these five things that they say that this growth mindset person has, I'm going to start doing it and making sure that I'm conscious of this and doing this every day. So by that, on your own, in your room, you can develop a growth mindset. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much, um, every team, my teenagers. Um, for asking so many questions. Please, Turayo, Edafe, um, Harriet Edafe, Oye Doyi, Clement, David, um, I'm, we're not able to get through to all your um, raised hands. So please type in the chat box so that Muturayo can um, respond accordingly. Thank you so much, Muturayo, for coming um, to share your story. Um, everybody that can't get in touch with Muturayo on this platform today, please send an email to Flo. Um, it's F-L-O. Um, I'm sure you can Google it and um, you'll find them online. So please um, ask your questions, as many as you can. Motorayo is still on for a few minutes. Motorayo, thank you very, very much. Um, what I've learned from you is that, you know, we should have positive affirmations. Mm -hmm. We should build res resilience, um, basically going out of your comfort zone um, and never giving up. And then last but not the least, we should always have, we should always know the type of mindsets we have so that we can interchange between a fixed and a growth mindset, depending on the situation that we are in. So I'm a student as well, see my pen. So thank you, <laughs> thank you very, very much. Um, before you go, please take a group picture with everybody. So everybody, please have your cameras turned on. There's over 250 of you online. Saidat, I know I couldn't get through to your raised hand. Please put on your camera so we can see your beautiful face. Thank you, Demila Deomole, for putting your camera on, but I can't see your face. I can see the ceiling. Oh, Flora, I like your little bow thing. It's very cute. I love it. But smile, Flora Deads. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so Fiat Raji, thank you. I can see you. I hope you've learned a lot today. So are we good with the picture? My team behind the scenes. Thank you. Jackie, Fatoye, I can see you and your daddy. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Morayo. It's been a pleasure to have you here at the 2023 edition of My Passion, My Future. Okay, so moving along, this is our last um, speaker. She's going to tell us a little bit about cybersecurity. She works with me. Her name is Olada Ko. Olada Mola. <laughs> Olada Mola. So Olada Mola is going to take us through information security and awareness. Thank you, Garvin. Sorry, can you hear me now? We can hear you. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon. Sorry, I apologize. My name is Ola Damola and I work with um, information security here in ARM. And today I will be taking us through the basics of information security, what it is, um, what are examples of attacks that we might face online and how can we protect ourselves? 
So when we hear information security, what should come to our mind? When we hear information security, what should come to our minds is pretty much protection. And what are we protecting? Our information. That is, you're protecting your information from people that you do not want to have access to it. So they can't see it, they can't change it, they can't edit it, or go as far as um, deleting it. And we'll be looking at ways to protecting ourselves and our information and that of our friends as well. So the first thing first is we should be aware of social engineering. So social engineering might look like a big terminology, but I will break it down for us. Um, social engineering is, how can you think of social engineering? What should um, be your first thought is deception. Someone deceiving you, someone telling lies to you in order to get an information from you. So I come to you and I tell you lies or I pretend to be your friend just because of the information I can get from you. And then we have different um, examples of social engineering. It could come in from of impersonation, mission, quishing, mission, that is um, text messages or via phone calls, scareware, BEC, ransomware, and juice jacking. You should know that um, the crimes that occur in real life, such as stealing, so if stealing occurs face to face, it can also occur online. So there's an attacker that wants to steal your information. And the worst that you can even think of is you just, you know, innocently charging your phone and someone is out there to steal your information by virtue of you connecting your phone to a public charging station. So these are things that we should be aware of. Another way we can protect ourselves and our information is by creating strong passwords. So when we're creating passwords, we all know what passwords are. Passwords are meant to be unique and known by only the um, owners. So if Sidas is creating a password, she shouldn't need to her friends. It should only be known by her. It is something that is unique, it's secret. So it should be known only by you and you should never tell anyone your password. We said that you should let your passwords be eight characters long. Don't use um, easily guessed words such as Vashima123. That is something that anybody can think of or you're using 000. It is something people can think of easily. So you shouldn't use words or numbers that are um, easily guessed. And then the next thing we would also be looking at today is um, ensuring mobile safety. So we're in the age where a lot of us have mobile devices, iPads, tablets, mobile phones, and the like. So how can we ensure mobile safety? We said that you um, make sure that all your devices are password protected and don't share this password with other people. Also, you want to avoid um, using public Wi-Fi. A lot of us are, you know, in the age where we want to download games, applications, and the like. We should know what application we're downloading. We should know what games that we're downloading. Some of us on our devices, we have um, watch time whereby our parents can always see what we're doing, but for some, again, they don't have it. So if you're that kind of a person, you want to let an adult know what you're downloading so that you're not downloading something that is stealing your data. Also, you want to keep your phone locked. Like I said, have a password on your device and don't leave your devices carelessly. Don't just throw it anywhere. Always make sure that you have um, visibility to where your device is. Um, the next thing we'll be looking at is how you can be careful on social media. We're familiar with a lot of social media applications such as TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, um, X, which is formerly known as Twitter. So these are social media platforms where we have signed up to have um, different profiles. So how can you protect yourself and your information on social media? The first thing you want to do is you limit the information that you post on social media. Don't post private or personal information, information that you don't want people to know about you. Because when you post these informations, you are exposing yourself to people and a lot of harm. People can say mean things to you online. You also want to be careful of comments that you leave on people's pages. Don't just go about saying things to people anyhow. 
you should remember that the internet never forgets. If you don't want an embarrassing picture of you online, then do not post it because in years to come, that picture might come back to haunt you. And be against cyberbullying, like I have said, there are predators everywhere, even online. So when you see that something is not um, appropriate, you want to let an adult around you know about it so that you can block that person off your socials. And also follow or accept requests from people that you know um, only. Don't talk to strangers online because they can lead you to doing things that you do not want to do. Um, the last but not the least is um, computer safety. So we have um, laptops, desktops, and the like. So how can we protect our information on our computer? Where um, some of us, or a lot of us have um, email accounts mm -hmm. and email accounts is used for, you know, exchanging information. It's just a seamless way of communicating with people. Or if you have to sign up for an account, they're going to ask you for an email and then they send an information to you for you to be able to log in. So that is um, what you can use an email for. And these emails, attackers have, you know, found a way of stealing information via email. So you want to be careful of emails that you receive, what the actions they're asking you to take. In all that you do, you want to pause, think before you then act. Mm -hmm. We should know that our actions have consequences, consequence of it being, okay, you've saved yourself from um, a lot of harm or consequences of it being that you have actually exposed yourself to a lot of harm. So we should be careful when we, um, receive emails and what we are asked to do. So my final notes today would be that you should always keep strong passwords. Don't use easily guessed passwords. And also on your devices and on um, social media accounts, you can ask older ones to help you enable the two-factor authentication such that there is a code sent to you every time you want to sign in to your account. Also, you also want to um, review applications before you download them. Make sure that all applications that you're downloading, applications that you know what purpose they serve, because for every application is supposed to serve a purpose. Just as human beings, we have our purpose in life, applications as well, they have their purpose. So know what purpose that application is serving and don't just subscribe or download every application that you see. Don't share your information with people that you do not know. And even people that you know, you want to be careful. There is no um, gain in just, you know, posting your information or everything about you online. Do not talk to strangers. That is people that you don't know. When you want to cross a street, you look left and you look right. It's the same as um, the internet or social media. You want to know who you're connecting with before you connect with them. And if something seems too good to be true, it probably is. Don't be swayed by offers on the internet. Just be careful. Always um, ask for advice before you take a step or make a decision on things. With that being said, that brings us to the end of this session today. I hope it has been insightful as it has for me. Thank you all for joining. Um, I'll entertain questions now. And I also have one question to ask today. So do we have any questions? Okay, um, Fausat Ali has a question. So I'm going to unmute your mic. Fausat. Please. You can ask your question now. Good afternoon. Oh, your voice when, you, when you said, um, uh, having a, a very hard password in your phone. What if the person is like maybe a forgetful person that easily forgets it? How is he going to go about it? Okay, so Olanda Mola, Fausat's question is, um, your, you requested for, or your advice was to have a strong password. What if I forget easily? How would I remember that strong password? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Fauzat. So, um, don't, okay, I see some people ans um, answering you. Don't save your password anywhere. The best place to store your password is in your head. From your name alone, I can coin so many passwords. 
you can always use um, special characters in creating your password. So instead of writing A, you'd use the at sign. Instead of writing I, you can always use one um, or you use zero. So that way you can always remember. If you write down your password, someone else can see it and always have access to your account. And you also don't want to use the same password across multiple platforms because you are forgetful. Don't worry, there are ways that you can create your password. And in trying to create your password, don't go and ask somebody to help you create your password because that is a step to you exposing yourself to um, attacks. I hope I've been able to answer your question. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Fauzat. Okay, I'm going to unmute. Um, let me look for a name I haven't seen. Okay, David, I'm going to have you unmuted now. So my question has to do with, you said that we should not, we should not accept friend requests on the social media platforms. So my question is, there are some social media platforms that they are actually created to bring about um, relationship with people around the world, such as Discord, some games as well, such as Roblox. So how do, um, what is your advice on things to do in situations like that? Okay, thank you, David. If I um, got your question correctly, I'm not saying don't connect with people, but just make sure you're connecting with people that you know or people that you trust that their intentions are good. So you don't want to be connecting with um, somebody that is a constant bully on the internet. Do you understand where I'm coming from? So make yeah. sure that the person you're connecting with or accepting their request is someone you know, and you know that um, they have good intentions for you. Thank you very David, much. David, is it okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay, fantastic. Thank you for your question. Okay, Clement, um, I'm going to unmute your mic. Um, I'll take two more questions um, for Lata Mola. Clement, your mic, is, your mic is muted. You need to unmute your mic. You need to accept. Okay, David, I'll move to you. Okay, Clement is I see, ma. So, some people nowadays, can access your password. So it, uh, if the password is strong, but some people is act on it, what do you do? What do you do? Mm, um, Clement, I'm not sure I got your question well. I'm trying to piece this together. But um, I think the point of your question is someone hacks um, into your device by virtue of them knowing your password. Is that it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. Yes, ma yes, ma um, okay, I'll speak now. So thank you for the question. Before somebody can, you know, have your password, it's because you probably exposed it intentionally or unintentionally. So you want to create a strong password and also enable a two-factor authentication on all your devices and your um, social media platforms. That way, they, there's no way um, they can hack you because there's already a second level of security, second level of control on that device or on that platform. And, you know, Two FAs are mostly integrated with our phone numbers now. No two persons can have the same phone number. So if there's um, an OTP being sent to your device, another person cannot get it. So that way you have curbed um, that hack from happening to you. Clement. Okay, thank you very much, Alada Mola. So the last question, please, all other questions, type in the chat, Alada Mola would respond to you or send a direct email to at ARM Engage or wealthadvisor at arm.com.ng. Okay, so David, I'm going to unmute your mic now. Oh, David, I can't see you anymore. Um, okay, Elis, uh, okay, let me... Mm. 
There's one on the chat. Is it okay oh, to okay. have a password? Okay. okay. Um, yes, ma. Okay. You said that our friend, you can give our passwords to our friends if you want to connect to them. No. But <laughs> it country, Nigeria. No, never... We can't, can't just trust anybody, anybody, even our closest friends. You can't give your password to anybody. Yes. No. Ordinarily, you should not give your passwords to anybody. You shouldn't give your okay. passwords to anybody. Okay, yes. so thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> Any other question? Um, please put it in the chat. And Ola Damola would be able to respond to them. So thank you very much. Sorry, we're running out of time. That's why um, we're not able to get through all the questions. I know you guys have a lot of questions to ask. Fantastic. I'm happy you're engaged. Abraham, Elisha, Elisha, I see you. Demila Deomoli, I also see you as well. So please type your questions in the chat. Okay. Okay, um, Alada Mola has a question to confirm that everybody was paying attention to what she was saying, and that would be our last prize for today. So Alada Mola, what is your question to our audience? Okay, thank you. So um, along the lines of my presentation, I mentioned um, a terminology or an abbreviation, PTA. So can anybody help us with what PTA means? PTA. Not the um, Parent Teachers Association, please. In line with um, personal, no, not that. In line with um, cybersecurity, what is PTA? Let's remember that um, there's something to be won. So let's answer. Um, mm -mm. Ladamon, I think we have a winner. <laughs> yes, we do. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, everybody. Okay, so drum roll. Drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. It's time for us to go to um, the announcements. But before we do that, we, will sh we want everybody to share what they have learned today. So Oyedoyi Oladipo, you have your hand up. You'll be the first person. Everybody else, please put it in the chat. Oyedoyi Oladipo, are you here? Yes. Ma. Okay, I can I... hardly hear you. Your voice is really tiny. Yes, ma. Okay, so what did you learn today? I learned that you should keep your password and everything you do is secret. Okay, fantastic. And you should always be careful of the friends you keep online. Okay, what else did you learn today at this whole program? Because we've come to the end of it. What else did you uh, learn? I learned that you should always save your money for the things you want to do what you want to do and also you should always invest in what you have okay fantastic so all the money in your piggy bank you're going to come and invest it with arm well done okay um because a lot of hands are up i would um just pick somebody flora des i like the bow on your hair so mute your mic so that you can tell us everything that you've learned today and what your favorite part of the event was. For your compliments. I first of all learned that I should learn how to use and manage my money. I should 
like use the 50 30 20 approach to be able to know how to use and handle my money i also learned that i should have a growth mindset not a fixed mindset and that no matter my um condition i can make it in life and i'll never feel curse god's with me and then my pe best part was when um Adisola was talking. I liked the way she expressed herself and her passion and everything, put things together. She was active. She made everything vibing. Yeah, that's what I liked. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much, Flora. Okay, I'll take one more from the chat box. Um, David said, I learned that we should have a growth mindset. Well done. Okay, that's from the health and wellness section by Mariah. Um, Tammy said, I learned to create a personal budget and save with ARM. Okay, fantastic. Um, Xavier says his favorite part was the quizzes. Xavier, it was your favorite part and you didn't win anything now. Okay, well, okay, we don't know if you won or not because we're going to announce the prizes soon. Okay, fantastic. Um, Ari Ella, um, she said, I learned that when you get income, you shouldn't just blow it, blow up the money. Absolutely. This is, if you blow up the money, we're all not going to live the lifestyle that we want to live and we're not going to afford a lot of things when we get older. Okay. And then I'll just read one more. Leslie um, said, I learned that I should borrow money. Not I should, when I borrow money, it should not be more than 30% of my income. Fantastic. Okay. So a lot of people have learned a lot of things. I'm very happy about that because that's why we're here today, this afternoon and spending time with you. We would like to say a big thank you um, to you guys for participating very actively. Um, and on that note, I would like to invite one of our senior executive directors at ARM Investment Managers. His name is Mr. Munir Buba, and he's going to come and share um, the vote of thanks with us. So please pay attention. After this, we're going to take a group photo um, and keep your comments, your chats coming in, your questions, so that Ola Damola or all the other speakers um, would be able to answer us. Hi, Munir. Hello, Moradeke. Hello, amazing uh, children. Uh, how are you? Um, we don't have a blast, but my passion, my future, 2023. Please type in, thumb up. Please uh, express yourself. Okay, okay. I'm glad you did. On behalf of the ARM group, I want to give each and every one of you a big high five for being a part of this incredible event. You made it extra special with your awesome presence. A huge shout out to our speakers. Adesola Sanusi, we share the same passion for math and science, and it led me to finance. Uh, a big thank you to Morayo Ojikutu. I admire your strength. Okechuku okay, Aja, I'm sorry, but uh, Victor Ozimen is better than Messi. Okay. All the Nigerians okay. agree with me. Okay. Ola Damola, thank you for the advices. And of course, our amazing partners, you listen yeah. for inspiring you with their cool ideas and wisdom. Thank you, Jenny. Great job done, guys. Thank you, Hugo, for opening the event and sharing so much with us. I must say uh, also, uh, though my passion, my future 2023 team did a great job putting together this fantastic event where you learn how to hone your passion into money-making skills while having tons of fun. They totally deserve a round of applause especially uh, Mora Deke and the co-host. Congratulations to all the winners out there. You guys were extremely engaging and my colleagues will be in touch to help you redeem your prizes. Finally, a big, big, big thank you to all the awesome parents for supporting you and encouraging you in your journey. You are the superheroes behind those incredible teenagers. Before we say goodbye, Remember this cool quote, dream big, work hard, and never stop believing in yourself. Thank you, everyone. We cannot wait to see you again next year for an even better 
my passion, my future. Thank you very much, Munir. Thank you for that closing statement. So to my teenagers, we want to know who has won. So this is where we announce all the winners of all the different events. I will call on my co-hosts to come and share the winners and announce for all of us so that we know exactly. And then I'll tell you exactly what you've won. Okay, so let's go. Louisa, you'll go first. Okay. So what was the first game? So the first game was the alphabet game, the one where you have to make a sentence. And the winner for that game is Paul David, Paul David Nachuku. Congratulations. Congratulations, Paul. Congrats, Paul. Okay, goodness. What was the second game? You're muted, goodness. We can't hear you. The second game was the ARM Van Quiz. And our winner was Janet Odusonia. Let's give her a round of applause, everyone. Congratulations, Janet. Brishima. Um, the third game was the trivia game. Oh, sorry, the yeah, the trivia by you lesson. Um, our first pick, our first winner was Zira Suyegi, who answered the first question. Abigail Eru got the second co question correct, and Shei got the third one correct. Congrats to all of you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, everybody, for using the emoticon to give you know claps and to put different um emoticons in the chat group. Okay. So the InfoSec prize. Louisa, over to you. Okay, so for the information security section, the winner is drumroll, please. Genius Osin Dane. I hope I didn't spoil your name. But <laughs> congratulations, Genius. Congratulations. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for participating today. Please send an email in the chat right now. Send a private message to me or send an email to wealthadvisor at arm.com.ng so that we, when you send that email, tell us your full name, the award or the prize that you won. Send us your email and your phone number so that we can get in touch with you so that you can win the prize. And last but not the least, the puzzle game. And the winner is David Odunobi. So we left um, the special financial literacy prize because there are seven of you winners. So we'll just see all your names and I'll announce them quickly. So please send an email to wealthadvisor at arm.com.ng. Okay, Chuku's face and his profile is going to come back again so that you can have his email address and his um, phone number, and also the correct spelling for wealth advisor at email, um, arm.com.ng. So the financial literacy winners are Janet. Janet, uh, uh, why now? Is it only you that is winning prizes? <laughs> congratulations. David, congratulations. Chinyere, congratulations. Um, David, again. David, you need to send us an email because we have David Wonkoro and we also have David Odunubi. David, David, you need to have your last name. Have a round of applause. Then we have Tehila. Also. David Odunubi, you guys are very active. And then finally, we have Emerald. So Emerald, you don't have your last name. Please send me a message on the chat box with your phone number, your email, your full name. Or you can send an email to wealthadvisor at arm.com.ng. My colleagues are also typing it in the chat as well. So please send your details to that email to redeem your prizes. And your prize, all of you. Um, okay, so the prize for the U lesson winners was announced when Jenny was on online. You guys will get a quarterly um, plan of the U lesson um, platform. So Zira, Abigail, Shei, Shei, you need to send your last name so that we have it. Um, that's your award. But everybody else would get an investment with ARM in the tune of 20,000 Naira. So please 
you need to send your details so that you can start your investment today, okay? And if you want to also co-host with me or ARM next year for the My Passion, My Future 2024 event, please send us an email. My fantastic co-hosts, Goodness, Vershima, and Louisa, I want to say a big thank you. They sent a video on why they wanted they sent a video on why they wanted to be co-hosts and I'm sure you guys must have enjoyed them if you really really did have fun please just put different emotions in the chat box or um, use the reactions um, so that we will know that you guys have fun so thank you very much for being with us god bless you to our speakers like Munir said um Mr. Jikutu, thank you very much. Your resilience to push through any short copying that you had um, is amazing. It's an inspiration to us. To Adesola, thank you very much for being here. You are on for a very long time answering questions. Thank you. To my senior advice, to my senior executives, thank you very much, Ugo, for the welcome speech. Munir, thank you for the closing speech. And to my colleague, Okechuku and Oladamola, thank you very much for taking the financial literacy section. Um, and um, the information security section. So information security is very key, guys. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. God bless you. And we look forward to seeing you at 2024, My Passion, My Future, brought to you by ARM. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye.